Hello, this is Denise Hefner from Blue Jay Point County Park. Today, I'm going to tell you a tale of two dogwoods. At Blue Jay, in mid-May, we often get questions from visitors about a rogue dogwood tree at the top of the walk to our education center, blooming more than a month after the other dogwood trees have bloomed. The rogue, late-flowering dogwood that sparks these questions is a landscape-planted Kusa dogwood, or Cornus Kusa, shown on the right, and the early-blooming, native-flowering dogwood, Cornus Florida, is shown on the left. Take a look at these two trees again. Aside from the different blooming times, what else do you notice different about the trees in the picture? That's right. The early flowering native dogwood tree blooms before it leaves out, and the landscape Kusa dogwood is fully leafed out before it blooms. These two trees from the same plant genus originate in different parts of the world. The flowering dogwood is widespread east of the Mississippi River in the United States and grows occasionally west of that. The Kusa dogwood originates in East Asia, in Japan, Korea, and China. And according to the Arbor Day Foundation, Kusa is the Japanese name for dogwood. First documented in the United States in 1875, the Kusa dogwood is now popular as a landscape plant in areas where the native dogwoods are particularly affected by a plant disease called dogwood anthracnose. Anyway, back to dogwood flowers. The native flowering dogwood on the left is a great example of an actual dogwood flower, which is a small cluster of tiny yellow-green flowers in the center of four white, showy bracts, which are actually modified leaves. The flowering dogwood tree earned the designation of North Carolina's state flower in 1941. Particularly notice the indentation in the center edge of each bract. On the right, we have the flower and bracts of the Kusa dogwood. These white bracts are actually pointed rather than indented, and that's another great tip for telling these two trees apart. The leaves from both trees show a lot of similarity. You can easily notice one of my favorite dogwood in general determining characteristics, that dogwood leaves hang down in pairs, like doggy ears. Get it? Look again at these leaves and set that characteristic in your mind. And while you are mentally filing away that information, note too that these dogwoods also share the characteristic of opposite branching, which could be the subject of a whole other video all by itself. Underneath canopies of similar leaves, the bark of each kind of dogwood is very distinctive. Flowering dogwood bark is divided into square and rectangular blocks and looks a lot like an alligator's hide, while the exfoliating bark of the Kusa dogwood has a really strong camo pattern. Can you see the resemblances? Information from NCpedia says that in years past, flowering dogwoods hard, shock-resistant wood was used to make farm implements, wedges for rail splitting, shuttles for spinning mills, tool handles, and other things. These two trees sort of fly under the radar all summer without much comment from visitors, but the questions start up again during the late summer and fall as the Kusa dogwood fruit develops. The flowering dogwood fruit is colorful and all that, but still subtle in its beauty. However, the Kusa dogwood reminds me of some sort of alien space being. Check out these bumpy, large, marble-sized fruits. Fruit visitors come through the door with a fruit in their hand saying, What's this thing? I thought that tree was a dogwood, but this doesn't look like a dogwood berry. It may not, but animals love them just as well. Every fall, I watch the birds pick off the flowering dogwood fruit, and the Kusa dogwood is so prolific that the fruit falls to the ground when bright red and ripe, and the squirrels squirry away with it. The flowering dogwood fruit is not yummy to people and shouldn't be eaten, but the Kusa dogwood is popular among permaculture plantings. The fruit can be eaten with the flavor varying somewhat between trees. Good examples taste like a soft tropical fruit, and in Asia, extra fruit is made into wine. 
The skin is usually not eaten because it has a sandy texture and can be just a little bit bitter. Fall finds dogwood foliage gleaming red in all its glory. You can see here both the native flowering dogwood on the near left and the Coosa dogwood in the distant right. Either tree makes beautiful fall color. Be sure to come see them this fall. We've talked about Coosa dogwoods arriving here in the U.S. in the late 1800s. Have you wondered if our flowering dogwoods have made it to East Asia? Well, Japan's 1912 gift of 3,000 flowering cherry trees planted in the Washington, D.C. Potomac Tidal Basin was reciprocated by the U.S. shipment of both white and pink flowering dogwood trees to Japan. While many of the original flowering cherry trees in Washington are still blooming, the dogwoods didn't fare as well. Only one single original flowering dogwood tree remains. So to commemorate the 100th anniversary of that original tree exchange, more flowering dogwoods were sent from the U.S. to Japan in 2012 and are doing well so far. I surely hope you've enjoyed the tale of two dogwoods. Go for a walk in your yard or neighborhood. Take a picture or two of the dogwood that you find. Post it on Blue Jay's Facebook page and tell us how you know what kind it is. And we hope to see you at Blue Jay very soon.